Weird Science is the revolution. And to finish it all off, I'm here with my man, Jason. What up, Jason? Hey, Jim. Good to be back in the Ultimate Universe. In the Ultimate Universe, yes. And it's the Ultimate X-Men that we're going through. I don't know why. I I don't think it was delayed. It just felt no, like it. It no, felt like it, a while from, I just maybe because we're looking forward to it. I don't know. But do you think people are going to like this? Because I think there's going to be problems here. Yeah. My my scores are, if I, if I would to graph my scores, I'm a I just came out of teaching math, so I'm in graphing kind of mode. They would not, it would not be going in a positive direction, unfortunately. No, mine looks like a ski slope, I believe. That's <laughs> what they say in in class. Uh, but here it is, Ultimate X Men number three. It is a written with art by Peach Maloko, script adaptation by Zach Davison, letters by VCs Travis Lanham, and we have been telling people they should give this a try. Me and you are both manga fans, so it's been hitting are, that yeah. kind of deal. Y- you get to a point though, you need more. And that's where I am here. It it really did end up when I got finished. I thought, first off, I thought, boy, people who are on the fence, people who are trying to stay, they're gone. I, I think that they might drop it. I'm still interested, mm-hmm. but boy, it needs to do something, right? It's an oddly structured book. We start off in one flashback, then we come to present day, then we go to a second flashback. It's It's just the way it's put together and the dialogue is kind of clumsy. There is a scene there that is the... The origin of the powers of May Storm. So I think there's going to be some people excited to see that. I think that's the scene that's really going to get people's attention. Uh, that's not the part I'm most interested in. I, I'm still, there's some bits I'm fine to be curious about, some other characters, but uh, it doesn't feel like a whole month's worth of story I just yeah. got. Now, and I know that, you know, May, she has the, the deal in that flashback with her powers, but is it odd that she looks almost exactly <laughs> Seiko, she, I think people are going to be confused. I think that some people would be confused in that when she gets those. But boy, her dad is just not a good guy. And mm-hmm. it ties into what we think might be the Phantom King. There's a lot going on. But like you said, you start out and it's, you know, they're doing this little deal like a Ouija board type deal in this and, you know, doing some things. And it almost might even be the idea of like, am I going to be married and rich? Oh, my God, yeah, it's this moving. Is a, you know? a strange scene because they don't. They don't tell us right where we're even in a flashback. We see Hisako and this other girl. Well, I think her name is Sayaka, uh, and this and, and glasses. The guy who we think is connected to the shadow. The guy we we saw wearing something on his head that seemed almost like a a homemade uh, Japanese paper charm cerebro last yeah, time. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he's hanging out there doing this. He's not saying a word. They're doing this little Ouija board thing with the Japanese 10 yen coin. And they're, they're having a little fun, nothing too uh, sinister going on. But at the end, there's this weird bit of dialogue where the girls talk to each other and say, hey, who is that guy anyway? We, were just, we just spent all this time with him playing this game and neither of them know who he is. Which, I, it was an odd way of getting that across. I mean, if maybe if we saw the beginning, how this whole little interaction started. But just to have that kind of jammed in the dialogue it it really set me up to feel like oh the whole all the dialogue and the way the scenes are put together just feel kind of awkward and yeah they find very awkward and it it feels like in scenes i mean you'll have it with that guy he's just kind of hovering i mean at one point he kind of walks over and they don't and then you'll get it again with may's dad who just they the people in these scenes seem to be like sleepwalking through like and i'm not even talking about like sometimes i'll make fun of the idea that hey the character doesn't have much to do i'm talking like they're walking around and really like in slow motion not, of the, not reacting it's really to odd things yeah should react to yeah it's very odd it's in, very unless, odd I mean, the the dad the dad is also wearing glasses are we supposed to be seeing a connection between her know, dad and this like creepy this guy's magic the guy i don't know because he seems to be next door i it's very odd because then two years later we do it that that's two years ago then we do a yeah, jump so and that, then yeah. we see that two years later I'm like, oh like this was back in middle school and i guess i guess glasses went to middle school with them and as far as we know he's he's not going to high school with them now so that's because we knew last time he he knew who Hisako was. He recognized her from seeing through whatever shadow vision, cerebral vision he was watching. So recognize the girl. Yeah, he recognized her. And so two years later, and she finds the coin. And it's just weird little things. I mean, it's one of those things where, again, I'll, I'll say in a manga, there's a quirkiness to some things where, you know, you can go through a, a issue or a chapter where, 
oh man, the only thing that happened was the one girl brushed her hand against the guy. Oh my God, you know, and blush, but you got to do more here. This is an X-Men book. This is far from an X-Men book. And that's where people are going to be upset. I said that I thought at some point there, this and Black Panther, maybe even the last issue of Ultimate Spider-Man, they're in a holding pattern maybe to get to the Ultimates. Because when the Ultimates come, now the powers hit. You're going to have a team. You're going to have... Right. Admit, but I don't know. I You can't do that, though. You need to do something. And we kept grabbing on. And I'll, I'll even give a shout out to Matt. Matt, <laughs> you love this. He claimed mm. that it seemed like while we were reviewing the book, we were apologizing for liking it because we kept saying that. But I told him it's because we're trying to convince people to try to read it because it is something that isn't like way in everybody's face. Right. It's something that might end up you might there like it some if cool you like aspects some to this that people don't often get to see in marvel comics and i would love to see marvel do something kind of different and good where but there are things that are being put in the way preventing people from getting to the good bits that are just like stumbling blocks and so the, how i was telling them i was like i understand people are going to get upset we're trying to not like almost like we're trying to trick people listen we don't get upset at us but maybe you'll <laughs> check it out what I don't. I can't recommend this issue. I can't. I, I the idea of even if you've been reading it, I think most people by the end of this is just going to say like nothing really happened, and boy, we're getting further away. That first issue, like, felt like okay, where people thought it was. Oh, I don't like the art. Hey, I, we don't, we're not getting Wolverine. We were getting some things that seemed like the development, the beginning of the mutants, at least. In here, mm-hmm. we're kind of getting away from that, even though we see a, a flashback with may but i just don't think that's enough i i think that some people like cool it things but... we get an idea that we, we hear the word mutant for the first time that felt big at the very end so that that felt very, very big it's so funny people are going to be like if that's what you think but it, it does in this book it, it does especially in a world where you don't have any recognized mutants or x-men so you keep going i like that i guess is that uh, her phone that she has, that she has like the crack scream, like right yes. life felt so pretty funny. We're, we're in the in the uh, the current day here, and they're in a gym class, and this felt actually pretty pretty realistic. I remember gym class was always usually some girls hanging around the edges trying to avoid participating, and and we see that May Storm has been looking up information on the internet. Always a bad idea, and uh, about last time the the shadow had influenced or forced three of these school bullies who had been picking on Tsubasa, uh, Isako's friend from middle school, those bullies are now dead. They hung themselves or they were hung. Hard to say what happened. So, And her, her screen here is cracked, which is kind of interesting. We get a close-up of it. Later on in the flashback, so earlier on in a way, uh, it wasn't cracked. And, it's, it, and that's shown to us and it seems to be something notable important i think I it's know. just that when she freaks out here and gets her power she cracks the screen herself maybe that just perhaps the yeah. case or they're just showing that she's not allowed to get a new phone because they have a, you know a contract and that ends up up in the i know how that is with my kids but yeah so they they end up her yeah. parents are even like you got to go meet this guy next door right and mm-hmm. and it's it's the guy that's glasses and it's very odd. I mean, it ends up where at least it looks like that. I mean, it well, certainly yeah, it does. The deal. So yeah. She, we get the idea that he's like a recluse. We don't know if there's any family living there with him. Uh, I guess what, what what's the Japanese? Hikikomori is a thing. Like so, somebody with like a social anxiety won't go outside. Uh, seems to have that deal going on. And when she goes over there, she runs into this cat. And this cat has a collar with these, again, I'm pretty sure they're just the, the paper charm little magical charms all around it and the the dialogue later on says that she thinks he's been painted i don't know if i see that in the, the yeah, I, art we had you kind here. of see the kind of like almost like an x and a couple of eyes on the back when okay. he grabs it by the back it looks like maybe like a marker or paint on that but so again, this is like her in to talk to this recluse guy and also that's why he'll open the friggin door because he wants his cat back and uh, he's he doesn't seem to be really good with cats. The cat doesn't seem to like him at all. Uh, and when he, she, he opens the door, he's got he's still got the bucket on his head with these crazy charms hanging off it. Uh, looks like the worst like Gilligan hat or the worst like Australian hat ever. You know, with those corks hanging oh, off. Oh yeah, it? yeah, yeah. Uh, it looks yeah. creepy. He reaches out with one big paw to grab the cat, and the cat does not like him at all, and claws the hell out of uh, Maystorm's arm. 
Yeah, and it does have a bit of reaction, but again, the, with the art, and then she she ends up going back, and her parents are arguing. She's sleeping. You get this crazy deal where you know some smoke and electricity is coming off that cut. Yes, so it, 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 the shadow transferred to her via the cat is what's even even when the the claw hits, you can see it's way more wounded than a little cat scratch should be. And there's like this that that black smoke rising from her arm. So this is when something creepy happened. I don't know. Is this connected to her having a mutant power? Is this unconnected? I don't Does know. It, trigger it her, seems her like it's connected. It seems it's like so this could be the trigger. It's the same I know. Day. And it's weird, again, because people are going to want to have just mutant power. You know, you have the mutant gene, whatnot. But this seems like these things are triggered by talisman. They're triggered by whatever, because the cat... The cat being painted and having the charms on, I think, is what kind of transfers the yeah, deal. Yeah, is doing know. something weird with this cat. Does he know about uh, spirits? Does he know about mutant genes? I I don't know. He's he's the most intriguing character to me. I want to know who this creepy dude is. He has, like, he's kind of put into play where you could even say in a weird roundabout way that Hizuko's power kind of came from something he might have been doing too. That that might be the idea, like you were saying, where it does look like he's say the shadow king of this deal. Maybe he is more of a Xavier type character because he's creating these. But if he ends up being Xavier, people are going to lose it. I mean, people are going to be like, "I do not <laughs> want that creepy guy as that." So we'll have to see how it goes. But it is odd that that kind of seemed like a coincidence that led yeah. to we're, the we're at least going to get more out of him we, we don't know his character at all yet except for these little glimpses that really have my attention i'm really curious about this kid and we're gonna have to have his he, he's gonna have to get his own spotlight issue basically at some point something illuminating what the hell happened to him what he's doing with his funny hat and that that's really what i want to come back and find out about yeah well what he should be doing with the funny hat is taking it off but when he <laughs> he's doing this at least again. when he opens the door i mean come on dude and he looks creepy I mean, there's no ends or sort of, but this could be that twist of he's actually helping them, that he's actually doing something. I don't know. Maybe that could be interesting if we do get to that. But in this thing, and this is a kind of deal where Hezigo said, hey, May, how'd you get your powers? And she's like, yeah, I kind of had them, you know, not really wanting to talk about it because she's thinking back and it kind of leads to her saying, well, you know, my dad slapped me right across the face. I don't think she wants to say it. But the only thing, it's a flashback that she's thinking. So I can go with the idea that things are a little slow. Things like she's just thinking of general things. The dad, who she must think is, Mm -hmm. you know, completely a jerk. Like he does seem like he's barely connected into the scene. But that might be because she's thinking this and it's, um, I don't know, it's weird. Her parents are having, her her parents are both not great people, it seems. So they fight all the time. The mom's really passive aggressive. And uh, the dad seems just totally checked out, not even answering. He's just reading his newspaper. He's being accused of having an affair. And he's like, oh, look what Marmaduke is up to today. He's just, he's not there. Yeah, and she's like, I told you I don't like Marmaduke. Stop (laughs) it. Like, I like Wizard of Id. But you end up where this is going on. And even like the dad seems like, he seems like a a zombie. Because the mom's like, oh, he's so worthless. And he's just like, bloody I can can buy that. What I'm seeing here is they've had this fight a thousand times before. And he is just checked out. I'm I'm okay with that being his characterization. Not that I'm okay with it. But, you know, that makes reality kind of sense to me. It's just so weird. And like, except for the slap, it almost feels like, like, I don't know that maybe Peach and Woka was playing the idea at one point, but it, I think you're right. But it almost felt to me like this is the personification of a thousand fights. So, you know, the yeah, dad oh, yeah. rarely reacts. You have this and she's thinking back. But when you get but this. This time, uh, Storm speaks up and kind of, you know, says, you know, why don't you just leave him? And that's when he just, again, silently, kind of methodically just grabs her, her hand, the hand that just got wounded, and then wails her across the face. And that's what triggers her first, you know, blast of mutant powers. Uh, and this is a really cool. Uh, oh, it's t- the best thing we've here. seen so far. I For think. sure. And I, even people who don't like the art, I think. But here again, she does this. The dad is just. <laughs> yes, this <laughs> like, he's not reacting to this. He has not seen this a thousand times before. He's had his wife call him, you know, a man whore a thousand times before. A hundred for sure. now a million times, right? right? But, and so, but this yeah. has got to be new. How can you not react to your daughter creating a literal, you know, thunderstorm inside your kitchen? Yep. 
as his drink is flying out, his glasses flow up. He's just sitting there. It's so weird. Like again, and even this afterwards, might... all he says is he kind of puts his glasses back on and very quietly, calmly tells her to GTF out of his house. Like, oh, you got to leave now. You're a punk. No mention of well, this a crazy, amazing, magical thing he just witnessed. I, I just, I get this. I, it's a weird play. I get this weird idea that she's saying that, like, in her mind or saying whatever, that it's like this is how it's story wise that it's being portrayed of like her, like, well, then my dad, like, he smacked me. Uh, what did he do then? I uh, he he told me I had to leave. You know so what I mean? Where it's do like you think weird. She's living I, now. Did she, I don't know. <laughs> is there, are she and her mother living somewhere? Is she living on her own? She doesn't. We haven't seen anything to let us feel like she was, you know abandoned or you know scrounging out life somehow without support and as far as i know i think most most high schools in japan are are private like you have to pay tuition i i could be wrong on that i don't know but she seems well enough cared for financially i mean her phone's cracked but you know what are you gonna yeah, do yeah what are you gonna do when you freak out and have a storm in your kitchen i i actually in that like the weird i was gonna mention it when we saw the kid the whatever shadow king whatever it'll be that he do, he might be he seems like he's by himself, but we mean you've read a million mangas where the kids are living by themselves. You know, the, this all, this does all happen the anime a lot. Have that, yeah. yeah, it happens so it's, much. It's like the, the fairy tales where the kids always you know, on their own, just so the story can happen. Yeah, so because you you know you, you don't have to be bogged down with nonsense, so you you have that. So that didn't throw me off. But when she when he said get out, like did it, the mom like I want to know more of that, and then you do like again. There's some things I like about this, but overall. None of them involve X Men except that you know you do get the power surge there, but I don't think that's going to be enough. But when she gets I mean, hit by the dodgeball, that's a pretty common way in an X Men comic of showing powers revealed. Some stressful incident when you're an adolescent, you maybe often with your parents pissing you off, and then boom, it just happens. So it's not like that's a new idea. Hisako was getting hit by a car, like that. It does. Right. It, it it ends up, and she was so angry. But again, even in that flashback, like boy, like. I, I haven't seen anybody pull back that far since Ike Turner. Like he ends up that Yikes. dad goes, the guy goes back like 80 feet and she doesn't react. Like you, you, she could run. She, it was a weird play of, again, I think it's of the mind. And uh, yeah. So by the end that she's telling this, I guess, or even thinking, and then she gets hit by a dodgeball. And it, it actually looks so much to me like a Charlie Brown. Scene. That was pretty funny. Yeah. It made me laugh. It made me laugh so much. And it's, she drops her it is a funny way bump. of just getting us out of the flashback. Is just you know she she literally she's thinking about this and she gets hit in the head by a kickball, dodgeball, something like that. And now things get wacky. Yeah. I, I mean, not that they weren't before, but you end up mm -hmm. having the other girls hanging around. We get some more characters yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. this we Nico, have, right? Yeah, so Nico Minoru, which is the name of a character in the main 616. She was on the Runaways. Uh, she's that uh, sorceress character who has that, uh, the Staff of One, is that what it's called? It's it's the staff where she can make any spell happen, but only once. Yeah, and so and she's in. So are people going to get excited about that? Then you just have red, like... Weird side characters too. It just yeah. ends up being goofy, right? There's like a somebody squatting like a catcher, and then a, another like an umpire, maybe. There's so we've got a, a girl with bunny ears. I don't think I don't think literal bunny ears. I don't think like a cat girl. I think a hat. It's and like then, Louise in Bob's Burgers. She she has exactly, a hoodie like exactly, that. It looks exactly yeah. like that. And, and the other one has this eye patch with an X on. We've seen X's pop up in odd places, even on the back of May Storm's phone. There's an X like on her case. Her, her her hairpins make X's. So X's are working into the, the background. Here. So this girl reminds me of like Captain Harlock. Is that what the, but I'm telling you right now, that patch, the eye patch girl with the X, I don't know why. I think she might be my favorite character already. She hasn't said a word. <laughs> like, hasn't, I really, hasn't moved, I, hasn't said hasn't a moved, word. Hasn't yeah. said a word. And I'm like, I like that look. I think it's cool. I like that eye patch. Like any kid it, it, who just decides to wear, and it, it doesn't look like a cool pirate eye patch. It looks like a medical thing that they put on. <laughs> like, eye, right. Yeah, Maybe that's like pretty eye. cool. I like that. Uh, but again, you just have this back and forth. Hey, Nico, you know, why are you always doing that? And she's saying, uh, I'm having problems now because it's my time of month. I'm like, what are we doing here? Uh, and then they, you know, you can't just sit outside of the group here and look at your phone. You got to get involved. There's a lot of weird. And then at the end, I'm like, I don't know what's happening by the end. Yeah, because Hisako explains to me, oh, that's Nico Minoru, and then just adds on some exposition 
Uh, she's weird. She's got an aura. Her parents are psychics. There you go. Just right there in the that, dialogue. That's I don't know cool. Where. And then at the end, uh, Nico pulls out from I don't know where this magnifying cla- glass, which looks a whole lot like the staff of one. It ha- the staff has a circle atop, so maybe she can just make it appear the way the staff does. And she looks at Hisako and May and says, "Interesting, you two are mutants." Two. Two. Also, that's, yeah, that's... Uh, so we got the M word, we got mutants, and two, so does she mean that she herself is a mutant, or that she knows other mutants? Because Nico in, you know, in the 616, I don't think is a mutant. I think she's just a human sorceress. Again, it's a weird play of, like, what they're claiming because of the way with the talismans and the magic and things like that, so I don't know, but she may, like you said, she may actually be saying, oh, you know, she has powers, her parents are psychic, mm-hmm. and she also has eye patch over here that might be I mean, like you know I, gathering so them up i don't know i was know. wondering if maybe the mutant thing in this universe isn't connected to genes because they're saying you know the magic but then on the cover the logo of ultimate x-men is a u with a dna double helix in it so that would be an odd play if it's not genetic the way it is in the 616 yeah and and she may just be you know nico may just be a sorceress in the deal but like i said maybe the two kit all I can think of then is either she or the other two characters, Louise from Bob's Burgers and iPad. Like maybe <laughs> they're something, you know, they're mutants and she's kind of good. But the thing when she pulls this out and looks, it's kind of a cool move. It's like like a classy old school move. Like she does that. Uh, but that maybe, you know, you don't know. Is she against yeah. that? Is she <laughs> it's down very, with it? Like, it's like can Detective you imagine Conan that? all of a sudden. Yeah, I'm telling you, like all of a sudden you're like, uh, so what do you think of this? And we're on a screen and I pull out this. <laughs> Magnifying glass. I think it's an eight. Like that'd be pretty fancy. <laughs> but in the meantime, it looks okay. Uh she's a weird issue. Again, I always while we're reading it, I always do and like Matt said, I'm not, you know, apologize. Mm-hmm. I'm worried that people will just give up. Well, and I thought there was something. And minuses. But... It's got these cool ideas. Now I want to know more about Nico. I want to know more about uh guy with a bucket on his head. I want to know how mutants work in this situation. Uh, that one cool double spread page is really nice, but just like the way it's put together. We, we mentioned before that Peach Momoka was, she's an artist. That's what she does. She she draws, she watercolors, she does these cool looking covers. She's not known for being uh, a rightist, as you say. And I, I think some of that lack of experience may be showing here, just the way the scene's run together, the way the dialogue is put into mouth at awkward times. It, it, it's clunky is the word, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I just want to mention that some people are probably laughing when you said she said people are against her art. I like it. I think it's a different style. You, you kind of, again, there's people who love Riley Rossimo. I can't get that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm allowed to like something. But you end up at the <laughs> end, like, I think that the way I can explain it here, if you haven't liked it for whatever reasons, and I'm saying specific reasons, you've read it and said, I don't like it because of the art, or I don't like it because pacing this. This issue is not going to change your mind. It's I don't think it's going to change anybody's mind. I think that a lot of people are going to say, who oh, me and you like it. I'm still reading it. I'm starting to worry now. I'm starting to get worried that, boy, you know, because if, if everybody bails but me and you, you know, there's no book. And I kind of hope that it gets its, you know, feet guy gets going. And it doesn't seem to have that. And it seems to be drifting away, even though, like it you said, it's weird. It, it has doesn't feel like things. there's an arc going on. You know, it doesn't feel like it's leading up to anything yet. Yeah, it's it's a collection of scenes just kind of shoved together. And there's interesting bits in the scenes, but there's no sense of, oh, we're really going there. Oh, I really want to see what happens. You do the you do the the fireworks factory thing. You want to get to the fireworks factory? Yeah, you want to. Yeah. I don't even know if we're going to where, a fireworks yeah, factory. I don't either. We're going to the zoo. We're going to the dairy. I don't know where we're going. We, it might be the weekend. We're off. We don't have to go. It's weird. Like you said, there's no direction going for. So maybe, and you said it about the. It's so funny. We don't even know his name. Glasses. You know, maybe this would have been better served at this point to just do one shots of the different characters to get towards. And you kind of, but you don't. Because maybe that would have been like, hey, let's get these things. Here's glasses. Here's this. Here's May. Here's here's Isako. And then when we get to when, like I said, I thought when the whole uh, Ultimates comes out and the world is now powering up and then get to an ongoing story with the characters you already developed. I don't know. I do like Isako. I do like May. I hate 
glasses, but it's just because we don't know him and he looks creepy. And I like that eye patch. But uh, and I, I'll tell you, even by the end, I think Nico's kind of cool. But overall, the story's just not there, and it's not an X Men book still. And we're starting to get to like how many issues yeah, are we going to go until okay it, it starts not feeling. Being- an X-Men book in that classic way because we're going to get some very mainstream X-Men books coming coming in the next couple months. So I'm I'm really cool with Ultimate X-Men being something really different. I And there are some, again, like, there's some cool things here, but I just, there's some stuff getting in the way of me enjoying it as much as I really yeah, want. Yeah, that's clunky. What would you give it? Uh, I'm at a 6 out of 10. Uh, the, I'm, the, the a, interesting I'm a things, 6 as well. The, uh, the creepy villain guy who may or may not be a villain, this Mention of the mutants at the end, the cool double page spread, and I'm still enjoying the art. I really want to see this once we get the full resolution comes out. I'm definitely going to pick that up because I want to see, especially that scene with the weird cat. I want to see what that looks like, in, you know, as it's meant to be seen. And I hope next time we really start to find out some things that make me go, okay, I see kind of where we're headed, and I see why I should be excited to pick this book up at the month. Weird science is the revolution.